Hey everybody, Nicholas here. And first, I want to say thank you so much for listening to our show. We can't tell you again how much we really appreciate you listening. It's been an absolute blast recording this and uh, and providing this on a weekly basis to you guys. So I uh, appreciate you all. You're amazing. And, uh, and keep at it. A quick note about this episode before we dive in. This episode, our equipment finally started to die and we recorded a lot of these episodes before we went back and uh and edited them so it it finally kicked the bucket on this episode and you can kind of hear that in the way the sound quality spikes and then drops and uh and editing it was uh, uh kind of a big task for for me and mike to do so with that said on the very next episode we get new equipment and new microphones So if you can power through this episode, then starting next week when we release episode 24, you are in for a big treat because it is nothing but beautiful, beautiful sound quality from there on. So again, thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to follow us on social media, you can hit us up on the big three uh, with Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, and just look up at A Fool's Quest, and you should be able to find us at any of them. So thank you so much, and now to the episode. (laughs) Have fun. Background Ambience brought to you in part by Midnight Syndicate, the perfect musical accompaniment for the Dungeons & Dragons role-playing game. Due to some violent content, parental discretion is advised. Friends, gamers, nerds of all flavors, lend us your ears. Welcome to the second season of A Fool's Quest. Previously, after several unexpected events and even more casualties, the fools arrived at the port city of Mudred. There, they said their farewells to the remaining members of the Fellowship of the Amulet. Due to the untimely demise of Hobo Slackens, Hobbs was able to retrieve and retain the magical amulet. With their new trinket safely tucked away, the heroes secured passage on a ship named the Sea Lab. After dropping a bit of extra coin, they were able to talk Captain Murphy into letting them use his personal cabin for the voyage. Now, let's join Hobbs the Tabaxi Ranger, Malfadar the Azamar Paladin, and Dwarven Brewmaster Ingvald Porter Altbeer as they band together in their continued pursuit of A Fool's Quest. Okay. So, you guys uh, settle in. Um, who all's staying in the in the cabin? We're all staying in the cabin. Yeah. yeah. I'll curl up in the all corner. All three of you, Macy. Yeah. Um, your, your Pegasus can't. Sleep no, I, I, okay. can, I can just... Your Pegasus is out. Kevin, Kevin can probably stay. And the Grand Duke. And the Grand Duke. Duke. Nigel can stay. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. I don't see any problem with this. I'm a drunk. I just, I'm just i going to sleep in my uh, my bedroll. Oh, fuck. So you put the Pegasus down in pod six? No, I just dismiss just, him. Oh, you just dismiss yeah. him. All right. So he just, um, he I do go... I'm Ingvald's going to go to pod six, and uh, I'm going to start brewing uh, beer as well. Okay. He set up a still on the ship. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I brew. Uh, we're gonna be on the ship. What is the, the approximate travel for the boat? Oh, it, it's gonna take days. So actually, I set up uh, two different brewing structures. One is just a regular brewery. Okay. So it's gonna be uh, about a mo- being. I'm still a master brewer. I'm gonna, a one day process for just a regular, really high quality beer, and, then, and one is a magic beer for uh, that'll be ready in an hour. So you start going to that. Uh, you use a. Do you have ingredients for the days? Or do yeah, you, I have do enough you... ingredients for. For both beers. Okay. Okay. And then uh, I'll source the rest later. <laughs> While those are brewing, are we able to explore the ship, or is it just... Oh, absolutely, yeah. You've got you've got plenty of time. Um, I'm going to start asking around the sailors for a new fishing rod. <laughs> See if they have any. <laughs> um, one, yeah, one's willing to sell you his... his, uh, it's, his it's a really nice fishing rod. He'll sell it to you for one gold. I offer him a, a logger and a gold, yeah. <laughs> just be nice. 
<laughs> yeah, no, so uh, he'll fish with you. He's got a second fishing pole, like a much more mundane one. It's a, it's, it's Ooh, I got the nice great. one. You got the nice one. You got a quality one. But he offers to fish with you, and you two drink and fish off and on through, throughout the day. Oh, yeah, drunk and fishing with the yeah. sailor. Um, Hobbs, I need a roll from you to see if you get seasick because you're a cat. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Constitution yeah, cat yep. yak all over this. You get advantage for being next to uh, a plus four. Or, oh yeah, plus four, not advantage. Hey, wait, uh, what okay. is it? So thirteen. Is it also a survival roll? No, no, that's it's a just constitution. constitution save. Uh, so if it's survival, you got another one. Okay. For the- so uh, you're not a fan of being on the boat. Nope. But I'm staying you're not in the cabin, yeah. <laughs> curled up in the corner. I'm a little poofier than normal. <laughs> I say it's gonna be the exact same as the last time I put you in a fucking boat because I didn't go great. Yeah. Sometimes as uh, <laughs> Malfader and Ingvald make their rounds and head back to the cabin, they hear you moaning. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Um, but Kevin is a big hit on the boat. Everybody likes having a dog on the boat. He seems to be having a great time. Um, plays fetch sometimes with some of the sailors. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, yeah, Kevin ditched you. That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> he let you die. <laughs> he knows I'll be okay. I just what is that? Water. What is a, what should I call this fishing pole in my inventory? Uh, fishing pole. Like, I don't know if there's anything special about it or is it just no, a nice fishing pole? There is nothing special pole about of fishing. it. It's, uh, yeah. Fishing of pole. Yeah. It's uh, the uh, the hook itself that's on there is a bright hook, uh, almost like its own little bobble that you've oh. got on there. So, just uh, but just it, really fancy. Yeah, yeah, just fancy, and you don't yeah, you don't fish too often. But you're not an experienced fisherman, but it uh, it'll help you catch some stuff. And Malfader, what are you doing? Just uh, nose in the air, perusing the uh, the cr- the crew. Let's see. Uh, Make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. Feel, feeling very authoritarian on the boat. You find yourself uh, gravitating towards the captain, both being, you know, more prestigious in your... Both being you know, dicks. <laughs> yeah, both being dicks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <That's fair. laughs> your assholery <laughs> yes. gravitates you towards the captain. To the league um, club. Yes, yeah. Uh, he, he goes on and on and tells you about how... Uh, you know, he's been running these gnomes back and forth, and they've been doing these mechanic works, and they've got all these different mechanical things that are really kind of cool that they've been working mm-hmm. on. Um, in fact, he's heard of a few different uh, gnomes who m- are on the brink of being able to uh, take a human brain and put it into a robot body. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, they're, uh, he's pretty excited about wow. it. Wow. Uh, apparently there's a height cap on it, though, <laughs> where he can only only be so tall. Only five feet tall is the maximum. Sounds like we're going to kill some gnomes, because that doesn't sound okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some testing going on there, but... That's um, a little disturbing. Yeah, but he's, he's taking a break from running those people back and forth to do this job for you guys, because he knows that the... Uh, Utmost important for Gagme, and he's always behind Gagme, and Gagme always treats him right. So, but brains in a robot body. Um, I forgot to ask. This is random. My uh, my new buddy who's fishing and drinking with me. Does he have a name? Uh, no. You give him a name. I mean, once you give an NPC a name, you know, it gives them a better chance to live. <laughs> it's fair. I, l- I like this nice man. I want to figure well, it he's out. He's not wearing a red shirt. Well, whatever you'd like to name your fisherman, buddy. You can even pick his race and gender. <laughs> the name of my uh, best friend <laughs> is now Eric Estrado. <laughs> Two eight total seconds. I got one. Perfect. I am going to now use your passive perception for while you are all wandering around the boat. Hobbs doesn't notice because he's scared and in the cabin. Um, Malfader doesn't notice because he is too distracted by the captain and the conversations that they are having. Ingvald, you do notice with a 13 just at that. that You kind of get the 
uneasy feeling that some of the sailors have kind of taken a liking to you guys, and some of them are, are a bit standoffish, giving you kind of squinty, evil eyes sometimes. Sometimes they're like, you feel like they might be following you, which is a weird feeling to have on a boat because there's not, on a ship, because there's not a whole lot of room that you can go, but you just kind of get an uneasy feeling about about some of the sailors that, that are out there. So. Gotcha. Um, awesome. How long have we been on the boat at this point? Uh, two days. Two days? I uh, My first batch of beer should be done by now. Okay. Uh, in an attempt to win over the charisma of the sailors and kind of patch any ill will over, uh, the beer is open to them in their mess hall. Like, I'm going to set up a, what, like two days. So it'll be two kegs of beer in that mess hall openly for them to drink. Okay. Um, and then, I, of course, I'm starting a third brew. And this is just regular, non-magical beer, but it's really high-quality beer for them. So uh, you make this a gesture. You put it out there to them. You put it out in the in the mess hall, and you you do notice quite a few people are like really enjoying it. Make a perception roll, though. Uh, gotcha. And the names of these beers are uh, are Brutus and Ensign. <laughs> okay. Uh, you said perception roll. Yep. Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. Um, so. You put the brews out there, and you win over quite a few of the people that you're a little hesitant about. The people who already liked you guys are, like, head over heels now. They're super excited. <laughs> the captain is, you know, making little snide comments to Malfader, uh, you know, over-the-shoulder type thing about how his crew is always drunk and they're half-assing their chores and productivity is down, but he's also getting sloshed every day on, <laughs> on the alcohol, so it's, you know, kind of taken with a grain of salt. Um, Whoa, hey! <laughs> oh, hey, hey! It's, uh, I mean, it's like a koala bear crapped a rainbow in my brain! <laughs> <laughs> but you notice there's still about eight guys that aren't really drinking your booze. You don't know if it's because they don't really like the alcohol... Um, but also, these are still the same eight guys that were kind of giving you that uneasy feeling, which they haven't really done anything specific. They just don't necessarily feel as chummy as the rest of the sailors. Gotcha. I, um, I'm i going to pull about Fader to the side, being the cat is basically dead in the room <laughs> and not a huge convenience to me. Mm -hmm. uh, there's only a few sailors who don't like us. It's the mm -hmm. little group, the table alone. Point them out to me? Uh, I... I mean, I assume they're probably together since they hate us. But, yeah, yeah. So as you, uh, you guys small group. walk around the ship together, because they're not all clustered, you know, on one table scowling at you, but you guys walk the ship together, and as you walk, you point out uh, each one of the eight different people. You're like, oh, there's that guy with the, with the twisty mustache. There's that guy there that's, uh, you know, incredibly pale for a sailor. Um, there's that guy there who's... I'll, I'll see if uh, any of them are pinging on my divine sense. Um, what does divine sense do? Uh, detects good and evil. Um, none of them are specifically evil, but none of them are really good either. They're kind of neutral. Do I get any kind of a, an odd vibe from them? <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, you kind of you start, you know, as the day progresses, you start to notice like they're not really chummy with each other either and you feel like you know charisma wise maybe that's why Ingvald didn't notice it but they're not really you know a lot of the sailors kind of work in pairs or they're mm -hmm. constantly telling each other bad jokes and they're constantly making fun of each other or they're spending their downtime together um, or drinking Ingvald's beer and none of these eight are really partaking in in those activities with other sailors, or even within their own core of eight, they're I all. I bet they're kinda... gnome robots. You have twenty seconds to comply. Can you believe this motherfucking shit? Gnome butts. Gnome bots. Gnome bots. <laughs> oh no, the gnome bots! <laughs> Don't want to fucking kneel with them. Um, them brain bits. I go back to our room and uh, address the tabaxi. Hobbs. That's really hard to deal with at this point. Hobbs. What? I, I know this is not your favorite place, but uh, there's something I'd like for you to do for us. Does it involve leaving the room? Yes. It does indeed involve leaving the room. I can uh, possibly soothe his uh, nausea uh, with uh, lesser restoration. 
Okay. No. Oh. It lasts oh, how long? Really? An hour? Um, well, it removes a status effect, so like, until something else sets it off again, probably. Yeah. So, like, levels out your... Okay. Yeah. You get your sea legs for an hour? I <laughs> mentioned the, uh, the eight crew members that Ingvald pointed out. So would uh, would you care to follow these guys around and do some reconnaissance for us? See where they go, what they do. There's something odd and off about these guys, and I'm curious to see what it is. Do you try talking to them? Mm, not directly. I'd rather observe from a distance at first. Okay, I can do that. Awesome. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I can also climb a tree. <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> it's a very hi- hypothetical climb. <laughs> it's a climb in quotes. <laughs> Surely this would be an easy endeavor for some of your uh, f- fantastic stealth. Yeah, I can follow him around the ship. See, uh, see what I can find out. Very good. Uh, with that, I'll uh, wait patiently for dinner to be called, and we'll take our places at the captain's table. Hobbs, <laughs> did you attune that? amulet while yeah, you I were... It, I put it on, actually, when I got down from the tree, I said I put it on, so I would have attuned it. Uh, okay. Awesome. So, the amulet is an amulet uh, with a uh, well of many worlds. Well of many worlds. Wow. Hey, that sounds pretty awesome. We could sell that for a lot of money. We're not selling it. It's mine. I killed the eagle. It's like five billion gold. No, it's not. Sell it. <laughs> yep, fuck it. <laughs> Let's sell an old, old pile of artifact to uh, some random dude in the city. Price is right. So uh, you can use an action to activate the Well of Many Worlds, whereupon it creates a two-way portal to another world or plane of existence or alternate reality. Is it random or do I get to choose? Um, right now it's random until you master using the item. He can go to an alternate reality, get his other character back, and get the fuck rid of this cat. Each time the item opens a portal, the DM, which is me, right, um, we've met, decides where it leads. <laughs> you can use another action to close an open portal by taking um, the amulet and and reactivating it again. Okay. Once the well of many worlds has opened a portal, it can't do so again for one d eight hours. Mm. It can't open one again. It cannot open another portal again. Okay, but I can close the portal that I just opened immediately if I wanted to. Yep, an open okay. and a closing action. Yep. Okay. Yep. So and you can only open one every one d eight hours, and you can never choose where it goes. Not well, yet. you can once you once you master, once I master it. it. Yep. So essentially, um, what will happen is once you've picked a once you've traveled to a realm, you'll make a, a proficiency check, um, and then you will uh, see if you've learned that that specific uh, plane of existence. Oh, can he always go back to his original plane, though? Yeah. Well, it's a two-way portal. Yep. Okay. So, so as long as back. he doesn't close it, he has to be the one that spends another action to close the portal. Oh, okay. okay. So he can always so if if I, stay open as long as he wants it to stay open. If I go to a different plane, dimension, wherever, close it, there's no guarantee I'll get back to gotcha. our Correct. reality right away. Correct. Don't fuck up. You feel the magic or after you attune to it, it feels some, somewhat like that. Uh, it's like a queasy feeling um, oh, that you got down. from when you were transported <laughs> you're transported to that other realm and then uh-huh. went into the jail cell Okay. Um, by, by humans. The- that dwarf? No, it was a human. The, that jailed you. Oh, that jailed me. Right. Yeah, I, I was I, mean to you. I thought you meant the one I followed into the cave that Mm-mm. sent me to that place mm-hmm. the first no. time. No, no. no. Okay. All right, cool. That might come in handy. Um, oh, really? Do you attune the helm, or are you still holding on to that? Just do it. Yeah, I'm thinking that curiosity probably would have gotten the better of me by now. Okay. That and it's been in my possession long enough. I probably attuned to it anyway, just by possession. Uh, I mean, you have to be like concentrated on it, right? Yeah. yeah, you have to be concentrated. You have to be okay. Intentionally trying to attune to it. Yeah, I'm gonna not do that. Okay, you did it. I want to probably something. <laughs> <laughs> Hell of dumb fuckery. 
<laughs> it is specifically the helm of dumb fuckery. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great guess. Yeah, that H is a fucking throw off. <laughs> yeah. The H is silent. The H is dumb silent. fuckery. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's the helm of heroism. So it means to so say helm of heroin. Uh, it's a rare item, and uh, the. Uh, the helm itself, the creature who wears it, is attuned and is imbued uh, each morning with the first level spell of heroism. It does not require concentration. Heroism, heroism is a first level enchantment. Until the spell ends, the creature is immune to being frightened and temporary hit points equal to your spellcasting ability modifier. However... At the beginning of your turn in combat, you must make a wisdom saving throw with a DC of 15. Or you are under the effect of fear and must use all your actions to get away from the encounter. After succeeding on a saving throw, you are immune to the effect for one hour. Upon failure, you must use your actions to get away from the encounter. And if you are at least 30 feet away or no longer within line of sight of the encounter, the effect ends. The saving throw can be avoided if you tell a story of personal heroism to the helmet. Every time or just once? Uh, <laughs> every morning. <laughs> it has to be a different story each time. The DM deems if the story is worthy. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, does it have to be him telling it or it just has to hear a story? No, it has to be him and it has to be about him. Okay. So my... Ooh, have you done enough? My epic battle against an eagle would not uh, help. Well, the story has to be about him. Um, right, it I'm can saying. be told by anyone, though. So okay. you could tell the helm a story about how awesome he is, yeah. Yeah. and the helm will accept that. To be fair, he's, he's be very fanciful, him. Yeah, obviously. Uh, so, But here, as the DM, what I am saying, <laughs> each day that a different story has to <laughs> right, be told. Right. You guys actually have to tell a story. <laughs> Ooh, we have to get creative. Or he has to risk the saving throw at the beginning no, of combat. We can't get creative. There are things that actually have to happen. So we have to remember yeah. things that he's heroic deeds he has done in past sessions. <laughs> and it has we, to be and true. We tell them. Yep, you mm. can church it up a bit. <laughs> but Oh Lord, there was this fire. <laughs> and with that fire there came this weird angel man. <laughs> he was real angry. Real angry. Uh, it is a cursed helm of heroism. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like my to... item is better than your item. Can he item. take it off? Yeah, your item is much better than his item. <laughs> Although, your item could get you trapped in an alternate reality. One where cats aren't sentient. and What does he <laughs> lost to feet? take it off? What happens to him? Uh, he has to have the curse broken. Yeah. He, ha he has to have a really curse removed. Curse. He can't unattune that item now. Ah, oh, shit. Until That's it's good. removed. <laughs> do you have re remove curse yet? No. Oh. When do you get it? Um. Like level 8, 9, 10? I might be able to learn it, but. Oh, well, that doesn't matter. matter. That means not now, so that's good. <laughs> Alright, that's be fun. No. Okay. And I'm that's why my, I my don't attune to things. <laughs> So, Hobbs, you're doing what around the ship? Now? I am stealthing around the ship. Yep. I'm casting Pass Without a Trace on myself. Okay. To give me 10 bonus on my roll. And I'm going to, after he's pointed out the eight people that are glaring at us and not liking us, I'm going to just stealth around and observe what they do and see if they're shady. Okay, so roll two different perception checks. Should I roll a stealth check first? Yeah, yeah, roll your stealth first. Eight plus six is... Fourteen. Fourteen and twenty-four for my stealth check. You got it. Nailed it. And two perceptions. About time. Yep. Nat 20 on the first one. Okay. That guy's fucking befuddled. And... 22 on the second one. Okay. Okay, so you travel around the boat, and uh, you somehow, I mean, you're, like, clinging to the walls still. <laughs> like, you're, like, holding onto a, a barrel. Now you can cling to walls? <laughs> <laughs> holding onto a barrel. You, like, sit down in the middle of the deck, and, 
And everybody's just kind of ignoring you as that one sick passenger. And it's almost giving you kind of free reign where people ignore you almost like an object instead mm -hmm. of an, a person. And so you overhear a few different conversations between some of the people who are uh, kind of shitty. Um, so first you overhear somebody offering them booze, uh, one of the happy people offering them booze, and one of the, the shitty sailors is um, kind of pissy with them and tells them to fuck off. Hey, fuck off. And the first guy was already a little bit slightly drunk and doesn't want to fuck off. So instead, the sailor who is pissy actually hits the guy in the mouth and tells him to fuck off. So then, then drunk guy leaves. He will fuck off. Off he will fuck. Doesn't ask him again. That's the first thing you observe that seems odd. Second thing you observe that seems odd is uh, you see two of the unhappy sailors, two of the douchey sailors um they pass uh what looks like a small piece of um slate from one to another and they scribble on it with chalk and pass it back and forth okay. you're they're standing at the uh the starboard side of the ship with their backs to you so you can't see, you see what's what being that? written but you do know some passing back a and it's it almost seems like a broken piece of slate. Like you could actually take it and cut someone with that slate mm -hmm. if you wanted to. Um, third, you notice a uh, uh, one of the sailors, the douchey sailors, takes and he goes to a small barrel and he pulls the lid off the barrel when he thinks nobody's looking and pulls a short sword out and tucks it into his. Um, under his cloak, which he's wearing a cloak. It's, it's getting towards nighttime, so cloaks yeah. at night is, is understandable. Yep, yeah. it's, uh, it's normal out on the it open sea. cold out there. Yep, but, um, but he tucks it under his cloak and takes it away. Uh, you approach the barrel, and you find three more swords still in there. I'm going to take the swords back to our room. Okay. So you collect the swords, and uh, you start walking away, and you notice out of all all day and all night, um, Macy has been in the same vicinity as you. Not necessarily following you, so like sometimes you show up to a room and she's already there, and sometimes you're in a room sitting on the floor or up against the wall and she just shows up, or sometimes she's looking at the same sailors that you're looking at and you kind of notice like she just keeps showing up at the same places that you show up um okay. you also notice she's got that dagger still stashed in her belt and she's wearing it now not under her cloak but out in front for people to see Did, okay all right uh so once i take the swords back to the room are you in the room probably okay um so I tell Malfader what I saw. Um, one guy punched another guy in the face when he was offered beer. Uh, I saw two of the unhappy sailors passing a broken piece of slate back and forth. Uh, hmm. It looked like there was writing on it. Curious. Uh, and then just now, uh, a th fourth. Was it? Was the guy getting the sword any of the same guys that I saw previous? No, okay. different guy. So the fourth guy... Uh, pulled a short sword out of a barrel that I found these three short swords in uh, and tucked it under his cloak. So I'm not mm. sure. It almost sounds like they're planning a mutiny. That does um, indeed. Also, did you ask Macy to spy on them as well? Because she kept showing up. I did not. Or Is Macy anywhere nearby? No, Macy's not in the cabin with you. She would either be at a place that I was going already or she would show up after I was there. Uh, and did you give her a dagger? I don't remember if you gave her a dagger, but she's got a dagger that she's just wearing. Yeah, she purchased open. one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So she's... She uh, is armed. She's been not necessarily shadowing me because it doesn't look like she's doing it on purpose. Um, but she is... Perhaps I should talk Spying to on the same young people board. you asked me to. And that's all I've discovered. We might want to take that information to the captain if they're actually planning a mutiny. Yeah. 
Um, we'll round up those extra short swords and I'll see if I can find the captain. Okay. <clears throat> so you guys go to walk out of your uh, the captain's cabin um, to go find him <laughs> and the quarters that he had originally rented out to you. Um, and you start making your way down uh, the hallway to head towards those quarters. And um, you uh, you see two men walking toward you, and they have removed their cloaks, and one has a uh, long sword. Or, no, they both have long swords, and they both have short swords on, tied on both sides. And uh, they walk by you, and they kind of shoulder check <coughs> Malfader, uh, one of them. You know, bumps you with his shoulder. Oh hell no! <laughs> and uh, and they like seem like they're just gonna walk by you and ignore you, but it's two of the eight for sure. Um, as I see them bump him, uh, I gesture to Malfader, just a simple hand movement, uh, indicating that they are their threats, potentially at least. Spin around and, and yell, uh, halt! Uh, the two men do. They stop and they turn around. Um, and they kind of look at you with contempt. And uh, one of them says, What do you want? Explain yourself. I'm a sailor on a ship. What do you want, boy? Your respect. And I'll cast a command to have him kneel. Oh, oh, this is. Is there a save on that? what I'm looking for. Uh, Wisdom save. Uh, he needs a 15. He rolled a natural 17. <laughs> so you say, kneel, and he says, Fick you. I draw. <laughs> he draws his uh, long sword and a short sword. Both hands whip out uh, opposite sides of the waist, pulls the weapons out. Uh, Initiative it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you guys pull the swords. You are right out your uh, right out the front door of your cabin. And they're in the hallway. Um, they were walking down toward the corner. And uh, you guys draw your your weapons and uh, you go to throw down. So who goes first? Uh, Ingvald's going to be going first. Uh, so one of my actions, of course, is always to uh, drink beer. So uh, I use my uh, extra action first. I'm going to chug a good portion of my see me brew which actually is uh, befuddling movements so essentially gives me blur uh, and intoxication so I'm going to attack with uh, with my plus one die fire dart cool uh, first one misses uh, second dart is a three again I actually missed both throw me a freaking bone here so I am just intoxicated. That's it. <laughs> Good talk. I just got drunk through two darts and whiffed on both. <laughs> Hobbs. Uh, I will shoot an arrow at the guy on the left. I'm going to use a bonus action to cast Hail of Thorns. Actually, they both need to make a dex save, uh, which is... 15 and 16. I think it's 15. Like a champ, man. <laughs> yeah, he is. So they take half damage from my from the Hail of Thorns. So both arrows hit. The damage on the first guy. It has damage hits both of them? Hail of Thorns hits anything within a five foot. Guy. So the second guy will only get hit with the Hail of Thorns. With the first one? The first one takes 14 damage. Okay. The second one takes two damage from hail thorns <laughs> that's it okay uh so guy number one moves up toward who's got the sword is that malfader yeah and he attacks 10 17 and 16 no nope. all misses yep guy number two moves up to malfader and also attacks so he slashes out with his long sword two quick strikes at you um, while you raise up your shield, and he does 17 damage. Okay. And now it is Malfader's turn. So the first longsword strike comes through for 13, and I'm going to burn a spell slot and smite. 
Oh! Uh, it does an additional 2d8 radiant. So that's another 7. That's delightfully average. <laughs> and I'll shield bash uh, to see if he is smashing prone. Okay. Yeah, you bash your shield at him, and he uses both his long sword and his short sword to makes kind of a cross with it and blocks you to keep you from knocking him down. So it's back to Ingvald. Yep. Uh, I'm going to swing with my ice mace. Ice mace. I swing a whole mage. My ice mace. <laughs> <laughs> Grab it by the ankles. <laughs> <laughs> how, how angry are you? I fucking swung with another man. <laughs> I beat a motherfucker with another motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a tale of heroism for you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. <laughs> no. uh, I swing my ice mace at uh, the person... Attacker one, I guess, right in front of me. Yeah. Uh, the first hit is successful. You hit number one, right? Hit number uh, number one, right in front of me. Yep. Yep. And that was ice mace. So uh, eleven damage total. One of them is frost damage. Okay. I'm gonna swing again with the mace against him again. Yep. And it'll be my plus one d six. It hits. <laughs> Fourteen for ice damage. Wow. Okay. And then it is Hob's turn. I'm going to back up to here. Okay. Um, make sure. Is anybody coming down this hallway? Do I see anybody? No. Nope. Okay. Then I'll take two more shots at number one. Uh, bonus action first of Hunter's Mark on guy number one. Ten damage. All right. So <laughs> that was two shots, right? Uh, one hit. I took two shots, but only one hit. So one arrow goes whizzing right by his head as uh, Ingvald's mace smashes into his right shoulder. Um, and uh, the other arrow hits that same shoulder right as Ingvald's, <laughs> <laughs> as right as Ingvald's uh, um, mace comes away from it, an arrow plunges right deep into the tissue there. All right. Bru- bruised, broken, stabbed. Fuck, God. That guy is going to attack Ingvald. He hit you for seven damage. All right, and uh, guy number two attacks. Uh, actually, so guy number one did that, and then he goes to run away. All right, all right, I apologize. I'm really, really sorry. Attack of opportunity. Yeah, I'm going to take a nap. attack with my uh, mace. Both, both of you can. Mm-hmm. Six. 19. And he's dead. <laughs> Literally, yes, he is. a single bit of damage <laughs> fucks him yeah. up. Is that why you chuckled when I told you my damage? Because he had one hit one point. Hit point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, mm-hmm. Cool. All right, so uh, he goes to run away, and all of a sudden, uh, so he, he slashes twice or three times uh, with his short sword. He actually hits Ingvald um, right across the chest. Um, I take it like a champ. Yeah, take it like a drunken dwarven champ. And then after he sees you didn't even flinch, he gets scared as shit, goes to run away, and then Malfader takes his long sword and just stabs him right in the back, right between the shoulder blades. Impale him. No May shame. Light guide your path <laughs> to oblivion. I don't know if it's heroism. Stab a man in the I, back. It's not a good story of heroism though, because you stabbed a dude. In the back. <laughs> like I can't use that for the. You gotta stab him in the face, dude. I was, I was, he impugned my honor. <laughs> this could just still be a dick. All right, guy number two does not have advantage now, so he's gonna attack Malfader. And he misses with all of his attacks. So all of it, I mean, he swings three times, two times with his long sword, once with his short sword, and your shield uh, after, so you brought your shield up above your head when you ran the other guy back through uh, the back, and uh, the attacks from guy number two just all rang off your shield nice. um, as you draw your sword out of the shoulder blades of dude number one, dead sailor number I'll just one. Let's do that, uh, that Superman over-the-shoulder glare. <laughs> And it is Western. Malfader's turn. Oh. Okay. Yeah. With advantage. That's the first one's a hit. Boom! There's a hit. And a crit on the side. <laughs> That's the most useless crit. <laughs> Crisscrossing strikes, trying to plunge them as deep as I can through whatever armor he's wearing or clothes or whatever. Yeah, he's got a splint armor on. It's about to be a split armor. Um, so I swing. Uh. <laughs> oh, and uh, shield bash. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck, nope, he's done. 20. Knockdown. I knock his ass to the floor. 
I said kneel. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that guy that bumped you, but yeah. Yeah, well, it okay, was not it was that guy. Uh, Through shade, but yeah, but <laughs> angry, angry. Yeah. Um. Well, I guess I have advantage again on him, even though I already did. <laughs> so I'm going to swing my ice mace. Uh, this time I'm going with the extra die right off the bat. I miss. Great. <laughs> I'm rolling like trash. <laughs> Those are some Malfader rolls right, right? there. <laughs> Oof! I get double advantage again. <laughs> Um, so my second mace swing. Alright. Okay, it hits. And, uh, please die. Nope, oh, eight, nine. Um, eleven damage. One of them is frost damage. I take a giant overhead swing and just aim for his head. Yeah, and you connect right with his head, and not only does the frost damage hit, but it actually freezes his head as it hits, and it just shatters. Skull, skull, shatters giant shards of ice all over the hallway. Hey, my failure. I didn't spray you with blood. Oh, good job. <laughs> so both those guys drop down the ground, and uh, just as uh, you see the last guy fall, Hobbs, you see Macy walk down the steps. Um, she's covered in blood. Uh, Mal, uh, you might want to come check on. Ouch. Yep, head that way. Peek around the corner. So, uh, Malfader, you walk toward Hobbs and you peek around the corner and you see Macy who's sitting there, um, not panting, not out of breath, not exhausted. At all, she still got her dagger in her belt, and uh, but her her the front of her clothes and her sleeve on her left hand is just covered in blood. I'll rush up to her. Macy, are you hurt? Me? No, my lord. This is not my blood. I hope I have not overstepped, but I found some assassins on board. While four of them slept in their cabins, I crept in and I slit their throats. Well, damn. As much as I approve of that sort of action in, in this case I think it may have been warranted we salute two around the corner just now she uh, kind of stalks around the corner walks over and she says hmm yes these are part of the eight assassins I identified on board the other two have been apprehended by the captain on my behalf yes we were looking for the captain when we ran into these two yeah he had arrested me arrested you well he grabbed me. I decided not to stab him. <laughs> but then he locked me in his cabin, and he told me I had to stop killing people. I, of course, told him that there were four more people that needed to die, and then he went to investigate. So I think he's doing that right now. Either way, I escaped his cabin, and I came to find you. Why don't you slowly back away from I say, Macy? I take a large drink of beer, and I'm like, am I the only person who sees a small problem with not us killing people. see <laughs> where is the compassion there? We are to aid the others, protect the weak, and punish those who threaten them. But I suppose in the interest of punishing those that threatened us, you acted fairly. But still, try to temper your actions <laughs> going forward. She says, Well, I heard you discussing the people, so I started listening in on their conversations. I learned that they were getting paid to kill some people on board, and I quickly realized that we are the only passengers on board that are not a part of the crew. Seems like a fair assessment. I know. I probably should have come to you first. But I was already out and about, and I did see Hobbs wandering about, and I tried to pull him aside, but I missed him a couple of times. Once I saw the assassins pull the swords out of the barrel, I knew tonight was the night they would start killing people, so I took care of the ones that were sleeping while I could. Now you said there were two more that are unaccounted for. Yes, my lord. The captain went to find them and then interrogate them. I think we should find these two and find the captain. Indeed. Can I recover my four arrows I shot? Uh, make a roll. Oh, yeah. Survival, 15 or above. Yeah. 18. Got it. Uh, same for my two darts that I whiffed. Okay. Made it. Got it. 15, so barely. All right, so you guys recover your darts and arrows, and you go upstairs. Um, Macy getting more timid after... Slaughtering people in their sleep kind of shadows Malfader. She doesn't take point. She doesn't touch her 
dagger. She actually takes her cloak and puts it back over her dagger so people can't see it now. And she kind of... I'm, I'm okay with her kind of hanging out in the wings. Yeah, like the uh, like the timid girl that she poses herself as typically follows mm-hmm. you up onto the main deck. And as you come up on the deck, you see Captain Murphy um, with uh, one of the sailors that you guys identified as the A. One of them down on his knees, tied up in ropes. And the other standing on the ledge of the boat trying to hold his balance while Murphy has a sword to his back. And uh, um, he's in the middle of asking him questions, but you can't, you can't hear it. Like, it's, mm-hmm. they're too far away on the ship from where, where you're at. But that's what you see as you come up on top. Okay. I, I look over at Malfader and say, Murphy, has it handled? Well, let's make sure it doesn't turn the other way. Um, I take my mug of beer and I tie it to my belt, being I'm thoroughly intoxicated. Uh, okay. And yeah, ready in action with a dart. I'll just walk forward and uh, cast a light cantrip along the length of my longsword as we go forward. Uh, um, okay, so yep, so uh, the guy who is on the uh, the uh, who's standing up on the side of the boat, uh, who's almost being forced to be pushed off Game He's the only person who turns around and looks at you guys. Everybody else is super intensely watching what Murphy is doing with his sword to the back of this guy, and he sees you walking up. And he's not tied up, so he's, hold, he's using his band or hands. They're held out in front to keep his balance, and he sees you, and so he jukes or tries to juke away from Captain Murphy and makes a move at you. He jumps off the side of the, the boat to land on the deck. And uh, it takes one step to move in your direction, um, reaching for something w- which might be in his belt under his cloak. But just as he takes that second step, Murphy's sword comes down around his neck, lops his head right off. Nice. And just spills right off the side of the boat. Um, so then uh, Murphy turns back to the guy who's roped up and, and on the ground. And he goes over and puts his sword next to the guy's neck and says... Do you want the mustache on or off? Off, please. Too bad. <laughs> Malfader, my friend. Yes, Captain. I think I have something that belongs to you. Indeed you do. I'll walk forward and cast the Zone of Truth. And then directly address the man tied up for me. Who sent you? He pauses for a second, looks from faces to faces and he says if I tell you everything will you leave me off at a city where no one can find me at this point I don't think he has a, the option to lie unless he uh, makes his charisma save I mean he wasn't lying yeah that's not a lie <laughs> but uh, that's a bargaining <laughs> you meant to take our life I may be moved to compassion if you cooperate maybe we're mercenaries. We're Obviously. Hired assassins. Who hired you? Don't change the subject. Just answer the fucking question. A man named... And he starts to stutter, trying to spit out a name of somebody that starts with an M, and then a B, and then a D, and then finally he just coughs out, whispers. <laughs> whispers sent me. What were his intentions other than to have us killed? Uh, I know not his intentions. I just was supposed to board the ship as a sailor. I was part of a group of people that got hired on. We were supposed to kill you in your cabin tonight. Three days into the journey. Your companions are all dead. I see that. You were the last. I see that. Is there nothing more that you can give us? I I have a job. I kill you here. I get paid in the next city. I'm supposed to go to an inn called the Dancing Wyvern to get paid. How much were you going to get paid? We were each supposed to get paid 150 gold. You know what? This is bullshit. I'll have to get a rep up. <laughs> <laughs> a little offended. <laughs> yeah, I know. I figured we were at least, at least worth 500 apiece. There was eight of us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Split. <laughs> Eight-way split. Um, anybody else have any questions for him? I would like to die. He probably doesn't know, but we should probably ask him just in case if he knows where we can find Whisper. I 
like I said, he probably doesn't know, but it would be silly not to ask him when he can't lie. Yeah. So, where can we find this Whispers? I could not tell you. Do you know the whereabouts of any of his other companions? Temple, Carl. Temple, I believe, is back in Cheddar. What of Carl? I don't know where Carl is, or who Carl is. I only heard temp, or I only heard whispers talking about meeting with Temple and Cheddar. Do you know of any other members of your little organization that have infiltrated the ranks of Gagney? I don't think any of them have infiltrated the ranks of Gagme. I think they're leaving the ranks of Gagme. So Whispers is recruiting out of Gagme? Yeah. How does he do this? I don't know. Well, I think this guy's outlived his usefulness. Throw him overboard. Back on the rail. <laughs> so uh, Captain Murphy's like, whoa, whoa, whoa! We don't waste good rope. <laughs> he unties the guy's hands. <laughs> and then he shoves the guy <laughs> off the edge. Perhaps if you swim hard enough, you can make it back to Mudrid. We're three days out. I say, no. <laughs> no, we can't. Let the sea hags have him. <laughs> there are uh, uh, sea hags out here. <laughs> no, the sea hags. Um. Huh? So Captain Murphy comes over and looks over the edge of the the ship and he uh makes a tisking noise. You know, he's like Unfortunately this isn't the part of the sea where we see the sea hags. This is the part of the sea that has the shrieking eels. <laughs> All the better. <laughs> and he turns around and walks away. You hear a light. <laughs> Captain, we do apologize for the ruckus that tonight has caused upon your vessel. This is just as much our fault as it is yours. These are the new recruits that we picked up. This is the people that we hired on to to replace our people that we lost during the Sea Hag attack. So, it's hard to vet out people from a city we've never really been in. But we had trusted specifically there that there would be good recruits. So, our apologies. I hope you can retire easily to your quarters. As far as your servant, Macy, can she stay in the quarters for the rest of the trip? <laughs> I've, uh, I have spoken to my ward. She'll, uh, she, she's not your problem. Okay, I've seen a lot of things, but that little girl terrifies me. <laughs> I turn, and with that, let's go drink. <laughs> and I plod off to the uh, to the kegs I have waiting in the mess hall. I think I might join you. <laughs> the captain, the captain also joins you. <laughs> joins you, yeah. Captain Murphy. Follows you guys all go get ripped. This concludes this episode of A Fool's Quest. Join us next time for a more fun and daring adventure. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to like, subscribe, review, and comment on your favorite platform to listen to A Fool's Quest.